We're getting ready for the D1 state championship game between Bancroft, Rosalie, and Pope John. Pope John entering the title tilt 25 and 2. Bancroft, Rosalie going for the perfect season 26 and 0 heading into today's championship game. Battle of Northeast Nebraska teams. And we talked about how championship experience may have been the difference in our last game, but neither of these two teams have been in this position, at least not recently. Bancroft Rosalie was runner up to St. Francis in 2001. You take a look at how these two teams got here. Bancroft Rosalie with a huge offensive output. Many experts say that they have been the odds on favorite. If you took a number one seed in any of the classes and rated them, they would have the best chance of winning out in their class. We'll find out if that is true as the D1 championship commences right after this. Rising from acres of Midwestern farm fields, a revolution is coming. A new era of energy independence from foreign oil. It's called soy biodiesel. Made with soybean oil, this fuel is a sustainable, renewable resource. America, it's time for an oil change. Soy biodiesel, grown in the Midwest. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. Across Nebraska, the nation, and everywhere in between, U.S. Bank provides financial, trust, and investment services to individuals, large corporations, and small businesses. Wherever you go, whether it's in person, on the phone, or on the World Wide Web, you'll find U.S. Bank. You'll find more than 50,000 U.S. bankers, home of the five-star service guarantee. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job as an engineer for the Nebraska Public Power District is rewarding. My education and technical skills are used every day to help generate electricity for Nebraska. And I feel good because I believe that what I do maintains the state's quality of life. NPPD is where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. Welcome back to the Devaney Center. We're just about ready to begin the Class D1 Championship. It's Bancroft, Rosalie, and Pope John. And now let's head across the way to public address announcer Steve Roberts. Good morning, basketball fans. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the Class D1 Championship game in the 2008 Girls State Basketball Tournament. This contest features, with a record of 26-0, the Bancroft, Rosalie, Lady Panthers. And with a record of 25 and 2, the Pope John Crusaders. Now let's meet the players and coaches. First, the non-starters for the visiting team from Bancroft Rosalie High School. Number 10, Molly Feekin. Number 13, Aaron Butler. Number 15, Brittany Buck. Number 15, Taylor Ostrand. Number 21, Amanda Munderlow. Number 33, Chelsea Saul. Number 45, Jessica Wagner. Here are the non-starters for the home team from Pope John High School. Number one, Megan Vike. Number four, Jesse Pelster. Number 12, Taylor Dinslagi. Number 22, Kelly Schmidt. Number 33, Michaela Bruni. Number 40, Jenna Beckman. Number 50, Kara Brungar. Introducing the starting lineup for the Bancroft Rosalie Lady Panthers. A 5'6 senior, number 12, Megan Stansberry. A 5'8 junior, number 23, Shelby Baudet. A 6'0 junior, number 24, Paige Gokin. A 5'6 senior, number 30, Morgan Knippel. A 6'0 sophomore, number 32, Kayleen Anderson. 
The assistant coaches are Rod Peters and Bullet Bodet, and the Lady Panthers head coach in her 20th season is Trudy Samuelson. <laughs> Introducing the starting lineup for the Pope John Crusaders. A 5'5 sophomore, number three, Cassie Stoltz. A 4'9 junior, number 15, Tracy Eyshide. A 5'6 senior, number 23, Danielle Kuhlman. A 5'6 senior, number 25, Paige Dinslogge. A 5'10 junior, number double zero, Jackie Sire. The assistant coach is Melissa Eyshide, and the Crusaders head coach in his fourth year is P.J. Book. Team, shake hands with your opponent, and let's get ready to play. Today's game officials, as assigned by the NSAA, are Scott Cotton, Tim Siefkus, and Chris Van Meter, the bench official, Robbie Lopton. I misspoke earlier, Bancroft Rosalie was the state champion in 2001, defeating St. Francis in overtime, but still none of these players were a part of that experience. So, relatively speaking, a couple of rookie programs taking to the stage here in this D1 championship. But for Bancroft Rosalie, Kevin, you look at these numbers. They've scored 93, 87, 89, 83 points. They've been in the 70s a couple of occasions. Their Shame closest, on them. Their closest game this year was a one-point victory, but it was against West Point Central Catholic, who, as many of you might be familiar, is in Class C1 and a pretty powerful that program. That's the powerhouse the two steps ahead of them. Un no, it was a victory. And it was. It was a victory. Undefeated Bancroft, Rosalie, in the dark jerseys. And just like that, they get going. Megan Knipple. A lot, the of their scoring, a lot of their scoring comes off defense, too, off of this full-court press. They look to create turnovers, and they look to attack the hoop as fast as possible. Now, we say, we say that that was their closest win, but believe me, they were scared to tears almost in day one of this tournament as looking underneath. Jackie Sire with two for Pope John. It got pretty ugly early on for Bancroft Rosalie on Thursday. They were down 25 to eight in the first half to Lawrence Nelson before they rallied for an eight point victory. Yeah, that would have been the one versus eight upset. That might have been one of the bigger upsets in recent girls right. state tournament history. Based on the quality of Bancroft Rosalie this season. Coast to coast, that's what they're looking to do according to the rankings. Dinschlagi into the front court. This is Tracy Eyshide. They look down low again for Sire, but this time the pass is errant, and it's taken away by the Panthers. Again, Bancroft, Rosalie in the dark jerseys. Pope John will wear the home whites. Three on the way. Gokin, yes. Wide open. High arcing teardrop goes in. And Pope John, that's one thing that they got to make sure doesn't happen a whole lot is three looks at the basket. This Bancroft Rosalie team will shoot the three, but that's the first one made this weekend by Paige Gokin. It's 5 2 in favor of the Panthers. Outside for the baseline, that's air ball. Short by Daniel Kuhlman. Another thing about Bancroft Rosalie, yeah, they can get up and down the floor, but they're a very physical team. That's one thing that Trudy Samuelson has really hung her hat on over her 20 years at the school getting some girls that are very physical. They're not afraid to get down low and bang in. That's a name you're going to hear a lot of. Shelby Bodette, who many believe is the best player in this class. Steal. Wild throw up, though, by Paige Gokin. She got the steal. I think she was just a little impatient, though, going up for the shot. However, and you talk about Bodette. Some people say that she is the top player in all of D1. It's kind of hard to argue with her numbers, averaging nearly uh, 19 points a ball game. But you got to remember, she's got two teammates that also average in double figures. So it's not a one one person show for Bancroft Rosalie. And again, dangerous pass, but Dinschlag is able to pull it in, and she is plowed to the ground and is he's grabbing her knee. Yeah, it looked like that knee buckled when she stopped and collided with the defender. She's coming up with a pronounced hobble. Let's take a look at it again, see where she may have been hurt. Well, now she's hopping off the floor. She can't even put any pressure on it now. Well, that's not exactly what you want to see for Pope John. That'd be a huge loss if she cannot come back into the ballgame. That's 14 points average, leading scorer on the team. Over there, they're looking almost behind the knee area, possibly down into the calf. 
I don't know if that's a cramp. It looks like it might be something a little bit more than that. Yeah, the way she grabbed at it, it would have looked more like a some kind of a collision-based injury. Tie-up is called. Pope John's going to get the possession there. NSAA brings in professional trainers for all of these state events. And they're taking a look at her right now, but they're feeling around behind the knee as well. So can Pope John get offense going without their offensive catalyst? Paige Denslaji. Cut off again at the baseline and nearly stolen away, but coming up with it is Eyeshide. You know, I've been doing these tournament games for 12 years. I don't believe I've ever heard the PA announcer address anyone as being four foot nine in the starting lineup, but that's Tracy Eyeshide, number 15 for Pope John. The program has her listed as 4'11". I think she's closer to 4'11 than 4'9". We'll give it to her. Why not? Give her the answer. I wonder when the re-measurement happened. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> to the foul line after the foul by Bancroft, Rosalie. This is Coolman, 5'7", senior. Kind of an awkward stance there at the line. Pronounced separation of the legs and the left leg back a little further than the right. You know what I think? Whatever works, go with it. Hey. For some, it was granny style. That's how I learned how to Are shoot. Are you free dating throws. yourself? No. Well, that's what we called it. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that, they still call it that, don't that they? That is true. At least I thought they Just did. Just the whole. That's how underneath, I learned how to shoot. Underneath, between the legs, heave it up, see what happens. <laughs> that's right. I think they've gotten a little more accurate over the years. We'll look down low. Bancroft Rosalie with the early three point lead. They're still taking a very close look at Dinschlage on the sidelines. And this foul is going to be on Jackie Sire of Pope John. That's her first personal. Megan Vike will check in now for Pope John. He's talk about knee injuries. Number 12 for Bancroft Rosalie. Megan Stansberry playing with a torn knee ligament. That can't be easy to do in a game of basketball where there's a lot of you know, cutting and moving. Look down low and two. 9-4, Bancroft Rosalie. Nearly thrown away. And you can see why the Panthers can score so much and allow so little. They play great backcourt defense. Full court Active pressure. hands, always trying to get a tip on the pass. And they've got a lot of speed, too. So if the pass gets tipped, there's a good chance that they're coming up with the basketball and headed toward the bucket. Goken with the rejection of Sire. And that tri triggers the transition offense and a foul. That will mean free throws for the Lady Panthers. Anderson will go to the line, and the foul is on Cassie Stoltz, a 5'6 sophomore. Kayleen Anderson, 6'0 sophomore, averages 9 points. She's been right about at that during the state tournament. And touched it just about every part of the rim without going down. John, I know it's early, but this rim to our left side <laughs> has not been very nice. No, it hasn't. That's the way Norfolk Catholic was going in the first half. They couldn't make anything. And then in the second half, things uh, got tough for Bishop Newman as Norfolk Catholic claimed the championship. Four minutes, 11 seconds left. We're going to get an injury update from Dan Hedman when we come back. Bancroft Rosalie with the six-point lead. Live coverage of the 2008 State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Nebraska's independent colleges offer individualized attention and a close student-faculty relationship with a goal of educational success. The Nebraska Abstinence Education Program, working to prevent teenage pregnancy and the spread of sexually transmitted disease by promoting sexual abstinence until marriage. Nebraska Furniture Mart, with 450,000 square feet of furniture, flooring, appliances, and electronics all in one store, it's worth the trip. Concordia University, Nebraska, is a Christ-centered community ready to prepare students for a life of leadership and service. Welcome back to the Bob Bay Sports Center. Paige Dinslaji of the Pope John Crusaders getting stretched out over on the bench. It looks like a knee injury. They're icing down the knee. She's fighting back the tears right now. Uh, returned Alpha right now. We'll have to get more information later. Right now, back to John Kevin. 
All right, thanks, Dan Hedman. Charging foul called on Pope John, so the news gets worse for the Crusaders. As you again take a look at Dinschlage, averaging 14 points, that injury coming in the first two minutes of this game, and it appeared, at least from where I was sitting, Kevin, that she had collided with somebody, but... It was a very strange injury. It could have happened uh, either when she stopped, because it was a very abrupt stop, in the right. or it could have come on the collision. Don't know exactly at what point in time when the injury occurred to the knee, but how tough is that to work so hard to get into this state championship game? You're finally here two minutes in, and you're on the bench with an injury. Your heart really goes out to a player like Paige Dinslaji. Megan Vike called for double dribble, and the news just continues to get worse. Pope John already down eight here as they have struggled to handle this Bancroft Rosalie defense. Yeah, you already had a tough task from the get go facing the undisputed number one in class D1 of Bancroft Rosalie. Outside this is Bodet. Now to Munderlich. They'll look over in the corner and try the entry pass down low. Nice denial by Jackie Sire. Got in there, knocked the ball away. And Pope John will get a possession here. Down by eight. Yeah, the Crusaders need a good offensive possession here. Hopefully get a bucket just for confidence purposes. To the corner for three. Yes, Beautiful. Tracy Eyshide. Great shot by Eyshide. All 5'11". 4'11". 4'11", pardon me. They just gave her a foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were giving her two inches. That's, that's true. They, they were taking foot. away two. Well, that's a huge three Heart for Pope Heart of a John. lion, though. Big clutch shot for Eyshide, and that puts Pope John with a five-point deficit. Stansberry throwing a screen up. Now they'll go inside, and another denial. Good play by Sire. Second time in a row, she's helped start this offensive set. But stolen right back. Shelby Bodet showing why she's an All-Stater. Came right back down the other way. The thing that is so tough, three on the way. Stansbury, yes. Megan Stansberry. Another open look. Bancroft Rosalie can do that either in, in transition or the half court. They can break you down, and they're so good at finding the open player. And more often than not, they will hit down those clean looks. Yeah, we've got a foul underneath. I, I misspoke earlier. Megan Stansberry, it's her sister, Katie, that's was trying to play this weekend with the uh, torn knee ligament. She's number 20, Megan's number 12. Megan's had a huge tournament, by the way. She's averaging six points a game, but has scored 37 points in two days. She's well above her season average here in this tournament. She just made that big three. She played a big role in that Thursday win, too, when that season was on the ropes, trailing in the first half of the quarterfinals. Well, John down by nine, and here's Bancroft Rosalie with the lead and the basketball. Gokin, pull up jumper short. And Pope John here in the final two minutes of the opening period. Trying to keep this one close here initially. Tough early news with the loss of leading scorer Paige Dinschlage. He was on the bench with a knee injury. Nice entry pass, Danielle Kuhlman finishes. Good offensive set, way to go up strong with the left hand. Had her body turned just at the right angle, able to get the bank in. Under 90 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Here we, get, here we get to see the Bancroft Rosalie motion offense at work. A lot of screens. Look at the great spacing. And look at the bank. You don't see that very often. Gokin for three using the backboard. What's not in the script of that motion offense is luck. Not saying that that was luck, but, but the bank is good. <laughs> not happening. Usually you get too much of a carom off of the glass, but not that time. And it's up to a nine-point lead. Hey, well, look at what, which basket that went in on, too. Exactly. So maybe the <laughs> lid has finally come off. Under a minute to go, Bancroft Rosalie forces the turnover. Here they come. It's Stansberry. Pull-up jumper. A little too long this time. And now Pope John. Maybe a big early possession here in this game. They're going to press the issue, though. Nice pass down the floor. It's Stoltz feeding Megan Vike. Good job by Stoltz. Took her time, saw the defender commit, so she went right over the top, and they convert. 18 to 11. Panthers leading the Crusaders here. Panthers in the dark purple, almost dark blue. Crusaders in the home whites. And a big stop there, and now Pope John with a chance here to get off the final shot of the period. Down to 10 seconds left. 
Bounce pass. Nice pass underneath. Great job by Eyeshide threading the defenders to Megan Vike. Down to a five-point game. This one would count if it goes, but it's short. So a nice little run here in the final 60 seconds by Pope John has closed the gap down to five. This is the Class D1 Championship on KOLN, KGIN, and NET Sports. Hi, I'm Matt Davison, and I drive Nebraska's highways almost every day. Please use caution when driving in winter weather, and watch for highway workers as they clear the roads. Slow down when you meet a snow plow, and don't brake suddenly if you're traveling in front of one. They can't stop as quickly as a car or pickup. If you're gonna head out in winter weather, check out the Nebraska Travel Information website at 511nebraska.org, or just dial them at 511. Don't take any chances this year. If there's ice and snow, take it slow. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 20 years, Education Quest has provided free college planning resources to help students search colleges, search for scholarships, complete financial aid applications, and learn more about student loans. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments available at 800-666-3721. Great start to the D1 championship game. Bancroft Rosalie turning in 18 points in the opening period. Pope John with a nice dose of 13. It's a five point ball game as we head to the second. And a steal. It's Eyeshide down the floor. Will she finish? Oh, nice block though. Good recovery by Megan Stansberry. No foul that time. Just got in there, altered the direction of where Eyeshide was going. She basically sealed off the lane and would not allow her inside. It's all about the angle right there, the angle in which you pursue and the angle in which you go up with the body. And the fact is now she's going to throw the screen, and that leaves a wide open Stoltz for three. Eichstein was screening them off to the inside, and Stoltz will never get a more clear look at the basket than that. I think the Crusaders run at the end of the first quarter is carrying over to these early stages of the second period, as that was a perfect offensive set for Pope John. And just like that, it's down to a two-point game. There's a big offensive rebound, and Paige Gokin with two, she's already up to 10 points in this game. Sticking with her shot on that sequence, didn't get the first one to go, tipped it, and was able to run it down herself and put it back up. 20 to 16 now, Bancroft Rosalie with the lead. Triple team down there. All the Bancroft Rosalie defenders closing in on Danielle Kuhlman, who averages seven points. That's foul number one on Gokin. Team foul number four against the Panthers. Gokin averages 11 points a game. She's only scored 11 points coming into today's action with both two games of the tournament combined and 10 today. So she's definitely back on her game. John Pope John, Pope John with 17 points right now after that free throw. I would be extremely encouraged if I'm a Crusaders fan, considering you put up 17 with your leading score on the bench. Yeah, well, she, they have been without Paige Dinschlage for basically the entire game. She played the first two minutes and then injured her knee. Everybody else just stepping up, raising the level of play. It's now a two-point two contest. And that includes senior Danielle Kuhlman, who just made both free throws to draw it to within two. That's going to be free throws for Shelby Beaudet. Took it into the baseline and was fouled. Again, you take a look. They have taken the ice bag off to reduce the swelling. As you can see, they're working behind the knee, above and below the knee. First foul shot is good. Shelby Beaudet. It's been a good tournament for her. It hasn't been fantastic. She only had nine points yesterday, but even an All-Stater is not going to score them all. And when your team's winning 75 to 36, yeah. you don't necessarily need to be and in there. There's a lot of time, time on the bench there. That's true. She makes them both, and it's back to a four-point game here. Reichheit stopped on the dribble and made a bad pass. And Feekin nearly got the steal and the bucket. Feekin wanted the foul there as well after the miss. She looked at the official and was hoping that she'd get the call, but unfortunately did not. Wow. Reichheit really having to play physical all four 11 of her to keep those defenders off of her and physical and physical and athletic is something that Pope John coach PJ book has been all about he uh, really led this program back 
very young coach, but has had to learn how to coach both boys and girls, as most people do in Class D. Coaches a football team and the basketball team as we take Paige a look. Lodge is uh, going to leave the court and she's being escorted down one of the Devaney Center hallways, probably for further uh, examination and she's limping pretty heavily on that leg. Yeah, she's already disappeared into the tunnel as Jackie Sire makes it a two point game again, 22 to 20. But Book, first thing he did, he had 32 girls come out for practice for Pope John and ran them and ran them and ran them, ran two a day practices. A lot of folks in, in the community were wondering, well, what is going on here? As you take a look again at Coach PJ Book. Well, he ran those physical practices and basically got them to play a more up tempo physical style of basketball, and it's worked. It's a football coach for you. Yeah, it is. 601 left. He's also had to learn how to deal with the other gender as well, <laughs> which he's done a pretty good job of. We'll be back. Stay right there. The headaches were changing my daily routine. Migraines caused Karen to see a neurologist who recommended a prescription. I didn't want the drugs. Um, and that's when she said to start walking. And so I started walking and I haven't had a headache since. I'm a lot healthier than I was. And I can accomplish a lot more because I feel better. I just let Blue Cross Blue Shield know that I was living proof that walking does work. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. The Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. And by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. Bancroft Rosalie with a two point advantage, 22 20, with 6.01 to go in the second quarter. Panthers have led throughout, but Pope John at first looked like they might get run out of the gym in the first quarter, have rallied back. And that will be free throws once again as Shelby Bodet right back to the line. Bodet with four points here early today. John, both teams playing extremely well offensively. You look at uh, Pope John, they're shooting 64% from the floor. As for Bancroft, Rosalie, they have the more points. The lesser of the two field goal percentages at 53%. Trainers, along with Paige Dinschlage, have returned from the locker room area. Now the trainer is talking to Coach P.J. Book about what the nature of the injury is. She's got the ice bag off, and she was able to put some pressure on that leg. As she came back out, they're sitting at the end of the bench right now. I have a feeling Paige is saying, get me out there if at all possible. And that's got to be kind of gut-wrenching, just peeing on the bench, helpless with and an the injury. Trainer's probably saying, well, it may not be the best thing. It's hard to say. We'll see if we can get a report on that. 23-20, Bancroft Rosalie with the lead. Shot no. Well, I think we just got the answer to our question. Mm -hmm. Dinschlage is about ready to check in at the next buzzer. 5.15 left to go in the first half. Bancroft Rosalie leads by three. Most of this has been done without Dinschlage on the floor. When I say most of this, most of Pope John's points have come. And their ability to stay in the game have come without their leading score on the floor. But now we could have a near turnover, but kicked out of bounds. Great job by Amanda Munderlow, though, to be right there. And that's that pressure. And, that, and that's really, you know, Pope John's done a much better job of handling that here in the second quarter, first quarter, especially in the first couple of minutes, they were having all kinds of difficulty handling that press. Early championship game jitters, perhaps. I think they're settled down now as we see Paige Dinslodge get back in the ballgame. And she's got the basketball, so it appears as if she's going to be okay, but her first pass forces an over and back. Eyshide would have had to have been 8 foot 11 to make that <laughs> catch and keep her feet on the right side of the floor. So the Panthers get it on the turnover. Oh, I shot. She really? plays so, so aggressive, and she is. You know, you you would you think see we, why she's on the floor. You you would think with the uh, height limitations, it might you know, restrict you in some ways, but certainly not for her. 
You hear of athletes sometimes using their quickness, and you know you can't dwell on the things that aren't in your favor. What you have to do is make the most of the attributes you do have. That's certainly a case with Aishai. Crashing to the floor, and somehow the Panthers end up with it into the hands of Paige Gokin, who has now scored 12 of the 25 points here in this first half. Well, on the bottom of that scrum, there were three bodies on the floor. It was Paige Tenslaji, so she would return to the ballgame for about a minute. She'll probably go back out right now. Kayleen Anderson came out of there, may have gotten a finger in the face or maybe got hit by an elbow, but a timeout on the floor. Let's see if we can see where maybe she got hurt. It was during that oh. scrum. Wow. She's okay. She came off the floor all right, but... Looks that's like a very a, that's a very returnable injury. Yeah, poked in the eye and it stings for a few minutes, but you're able to return. Uh, not so much the case with Paige Tinsludge because uh, she had a defender fall right on that knee. She cannot catch a break no. here, and again she's back on the bench, getting checked out by the trainers. Regardless, it's a five-point ball game. Uh, both teams playing extremely well here in the first half. A lot of good offense. Bancroft Rosalie looking to get a stop defensively. Waiting, waiting, putting up the shot and fouled. And again, Danielle Kuhlman, who's been the inside presence here in this first half for Pope John's going to get another opportunity to score from the free throw line. Woman again will spread the back leg back. Just a different way of shooting free throws. But it works for her. Bancroft Rosalie has led throughout the ball game, John, but I get, you know, in no sense in my mind it, does it seem like they're the odds on favor to win this ball game. This is really a toss-up at this point in time. A little short on the second one. 25-21. It's just a matter of withstanding the pressure of Bancroft, Rosalie, and withstanding their scoring threats. So far, they've been able to do it. And they've been able to keep track, but you gotta believe the higher the score, the better the advantage for the Lady Panthers. Absolutely. There aren't too many teams in D1 that can outscore Bancroft, Rosalie. You can see, playing mostly man-to-man -man defense here. Bodette. Finds her open teammate. And that's a way to come back from getting hit in the face. Kayleen Anderson scores two. All started with the drive by Bodette. Drew the extra defender, dished off, and a great finish. That ball was tipped. Fekin nearly had yet another turnover. Back up to a six-point game now. Fekin again. Keeps it alive this time. Down the floor to Gokin. But there's Bodette. Oh, and she missed it. She won't miss many like that, I guarantee you. Two shots in close, neither one of them fell, but still give a lot of credit to Fekin running the top of that pesky zone, always getting her hands on the ball. Foul, and I think Gokin's gonna get called on this one from behind of the offensive player. And she does. That's her second. Team foul number six on Bancroft Rosalie. We have three minutes and two seconds left to play here in this first half. It's the number one ranked and undefeated Bancroft Rosalie Panthers leading by six. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank. The U.S. Bank Corp. Foundation supports charitable, educational, and community service-oriented organizations in communities across Nebraska and the nation. U.S. Bank employees dedicate their time and efforts to local causes they are truly passionate about. U.S. Bank. Wherever you go, you'll find us. A good cowboy can't go to bed at night if his cows are hungry. You spend all of your life taking care of animals. These are the stories that made Nebraska the beef state. Coming this June on NET1 and NETHD. The Bob Devaney Sports Center playing host to the Girls State Basketball Championships, the second game of six in the second quarter. 
on three. That time missed by Stoltz off the inbound, and here comes Bancroft, Rosalie. Bodette all the way in. Nice baseline pass, opened it back up. Long two, missed, and the ball's out of bounds. Last touch by Bancroft, Rosalie. Bodette is getting a lot of attention from Pope John defensively, so that's opening things up for the other Bancroft, Rosalie players. That time the shot, shot just did not fall, but you know they're going to come, certainly in the second half and the remainder of the second period. Amanda Munderlow being aggressive again, as the Panthers are wont to do. This time commits the foul, and that's team now foul number seven, so that's going to mean free throws the rest of the half. And this is Taylor Dinschlagi, Paige Dinschlagi, leading scorer on the bench, and again, another ice wrap on her knee, her left knee, which she is now injured twice, we believe, in this game. Makes the first, we'll get the second as you take a look at her. She came back in for just a few moments earlier in the quarter and then got involved in a scrum, and back to the bench she went. What's the odds of that happening? Oh. Having a, a defender fall on that exact knee just seconds after coming exactly. to the Exactly, and it was, it was maybe no more than a minute after she came back in. I mean, you can't tell a player like Paige Dinslaji to hold back either. Well, Taylor does good for Pope John, makes them both, and it's down to a four-point game now. 2.30 left to play here in the first half. Class D1 final, second of six this afternoon on a beautiful day here in southeast Nebraska. Good crowd on hand here in the Devaney Center. Attendance has been pretty solid, especially from uh, some of the teams with the farther drives. The better crowds I've seen from the tournament have come from the you know, Norfolk, Bancroft, Rosalie, Madison County, South Sioux City. Alliance had a great showing yesterday here at the Devaney Center. So too did Carney from Central Nebraska. As you saw Shelby Bodette make the three, and that's over and back. They had already established possession in the front court, and when Ishide caught that pass at the center line, her left foot came in on the wrong side of the stripe, and so a turnover in Bancroft Rosalie now with a seven-point lead. Can try to extend that here, under two minutes to go in the first half. Entry pass low, draws a lot of attention, a lot of hands, now from the corner. How about that for a contested three? That is a tough three, a little step back, nothing but nylon, and hand in the face. And now the steal, and this is what you worry about when you play this Bancroft Rosalie team. They are so good at scoring after getting points, making plays defensively, and then coming back and getting more points. They're home run hitters, and right now they're knocking it out of the park. All of a sudden, we have a 12-point ball game. Just moments ago, it was 25-21. As Kayleen Anderson finishes, and Bancroft, Rosalie on a run now. As the lead is extended out to 12, and let's go now courtside. Here's Dan. Yeah, John and Kevin, you were talking a little bit about the Crusaders head coach, P.J. Book. He does coach the football team as well. Coached them to a state title earlier in the year, trying to do the same with his girls today. The boys won theirs in the fall, and the girls want to wear theirs in the winter. If they do, I, I've never been a part of a, a season like this in, in the two sports. And for the girls to have the opportunity is first and foremost to us. And, and uh, we say that uh, you can't earn anything unless you, you, you earn the opportunity, and they've earned the opportunity. They have that opportunity right now, but find themselves down 12, guys. Well, as we said, he had started with his first year as girls basketball coach, started with 34 players, and with his physical two-a-day practices, that number started to whittle down pretty fast, but it has produced winning results. Football, girls basketball, PJ told me before the game he'd work seven years with the baseball team, but backed off this year. Well, he, again, went, when, he went a little time. Well, when you, when, you, when you coach at a smaller school, you're going to be responsible for a lot of sports. Here's a... Little pull-up jumper, short by Eyshide, an offensive rebound, though, and a second chance. Certainly an up-and-coming coach is P.J. Book. Already made a strong name for himself in the Pope John community. Uh, just an outstanding young man, and I think the future is pretty bright for his coaching career. By the way, never played basketball competitively. He knows he a, a lot. He was a football guy. To the I, line, Jackie Sire. I remember him at the football championships wearing the backwards hat. Just a very young, energetic guy. I think the players really enjoyed playing for him. First one is good by Jackie Sire, 5'10 junior, averaging nine points. A little too strong on the second, and now the lead is 11 for Bancroft Rosalie with the ball under a minute to go. 
Book, by the way, won't be the only girls basketball slash football coach we'll see today. John Larson of Lincoln Southeast also does the trick. And it's not unusual. Bob Schnitzler, a legendary coach mm -hmm. in Northeast Nebraska, he was a he did both the girls sport, and it's it's a different dynamic. I mean, you're dealing with guys in the most aggressive sport there is in the high school level, football, and then you go to girls basketball dealing with a whole new gender, but he kind of brought that same attitude, and it's worked for Pope John. And the other crazy thing is those sports are back-to-back, -back, so the transition has to be very quick, and it's very difficult. And Croft Rosalie looks like they may get a final shot here. That's going to be a travel. Just got crossed up trying to take the ball inside, then kind of decided to back it out a little bit and called for the turnover. Pope John with the basketball down by 11. A nice bucket here would give them a little momentum heading into halftime. Under 15 seconds left. First, they got to get it into the front court. And this has been a trick for many teams this year. Pull up inside, off the glass. Tracy Eyeshide. What a half she has. With a big bucket, half court shot. Will Short. And so Pope John has weathered a storm of sorts. However, Bancroft Rosalie still has a nine point lead. 2001 state champs haven't been back since. Now they are with a perfect season as we'll head down court side to Dan. Guys here with uh, head coach and obviously, you know, they cut it down to a couple possessions and, and you guys pull away in the, in the uh, stretch run in the second half there. Yeah, the kids did a really nice job of being patient on offense there, right? for just a moment anyway, and we got a couple of really nice looks inside. If we just be patient on offense, we'll be all right. Coach Sandlison, what's the key in the second half here? Defense. <laughs> Still comes down to playing good defense. Whichever team plays better defense has a better chance of winning it. All right, thanks for stopping in. Good luck in the second half. It is 35 to 26 as we go to break. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job as an engineer for the Nebraska Public Power District is rewarding. My education and technical skills are used every day to help generate electricity for Nebraska. And I feel good because I believe that what I do maintains the state's quality of life. NPPD is where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District. Always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. Programming is provided in part by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. These cost about $50. This costs about $57,000. Choosing to use these can help you avoid this. And since inactivity is a better predictor of death than smoking, high blood pressure, and even heart disease, using these more and this less could save you more than money. A message that's good to know from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska. Programming on NET television is provided in part by Education Quest Foundation. For over 20 years, Education Quest has provided free college planning resources to help students search colleges, search for scholarships, complete financial aid applications, and learn more about student loans. Education Quest is located in Kearney, Lincoln, and Omaha. Appointments available at 800-666-3721. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And by U.S. Bank, measuring success through performance, pride, products, and people, backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Where would you be? She sings from the heart with a voice that soars. Country superstar Martina McBride rocks great performances with her greatest hits, both old and new. This one's for the girls who've ever had a broken heart. Embrace Martina McBride live in concert on great performances. Thursday night at 9 central time on NET1.
At halftime of each championship game, we recognize the 10-11 coaches All-State team. Ballot forms were sent to coaches throughout the entire state of Nebraska. 10-11 tallied those votes in the 2008 class. D1 All-State team features, well, John, a lot of scoring top to bottom. Ton of scoring. Heather Thorson averaging nearly 23 points a game from Meade. You have Paige Fraundorfer of Humphrey. Got to give a shout out to the town of Humphrey. Both Humphrey <laughs> High and Humphrey St. Francis made it here to Girls State. I'm surprised that the town is still standing because everyone it was, was down, down here. They yeah. had to shut the whole thing down. But Paige Fraundorfer had a great season for Humphrey High, averaging 19 points a game. And of course, two of the players we're seeing today, unfortunately, Paige Dinschlage, we're not seeing much of. Dan Hedman will get us an injury report on her when Coach Book talks to us to, before the second half. We've only seen her for maybe a minute and a half combined. But Shelby Bodette, who has, uh, of course, been a big part of Bancroft Rosalie's success, what a great team they have. You had to honor somebody. And as we said earlier on, she arguably is one of the best team, best players in the state, and especially in her class. Basically, a you pick them for that entire team because it could have been really anybody. Uh, Heather Thorson, a shout out to her from Meade. I know that uh, Meade didn't make the state tournament, but one of the top scorers in D1 with uh, 22.6 points per game. So the level of D1 basketball certainly elevated this year. No doubt about it. And Andrea Schaff of Stewart also on that coaches All-State team. Congratulations to all of those players for making this year's All-State team and being honored here this afternoon. We're coming up on Halftime Stats. We'll have those numbers for you coming up. Bancroft Rosalie leads it by nine here in the Class D1 Girls' State Championship. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. The Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org and by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. Hello, I'm Rod Bates, General Manager of NET. Do you rely on an outdoor antenna or rabbit ears to receive your favorite television channels? You'll soon have to make some choices. You'll have three options. First, you can buy a new digital television set. Second, you can subscribe to a pay TV service like cable or satellite. And the third option is you can buy a converter box that will let you keep using your current television set. Now the federal government started offering DTV converter coupons worth $40 each to help you afford the boxes you'll need. You can apply by calling 888-388-2009 or you can log on to the internet and go to DTV2009.gov. If you have any questions at all, you can call us here at NET for help. Our number is 1-800-634-6788. We just want to make sure you continue to receive our programs. Halftime numbers of this D1 championship game. Bancroft Rosalie with the nine point lead. You look at most of the team numbers and things seem to be pretty equal. Field goal percentage is about the same. Rebounds are pretty much even, but then you look at the turnovers and that's the big difference. Pope John 13 turnovers in the first half. Bancroft Rosalie, that pressure defense, that is their method. That's the way they get things done this season. Leading the way, Paige Gokin with 12. The All-Stater Shelby Bodette with eight. Leading the way for Pope John, Danielle Kuhlman with seven. We'll hear from head coach P.J. Book of the Crusaders when we come back, and then it's the second half. The Class D1 championship on NET and 10-11. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And by U.S. Bank, measuring success through performance, pride, products, and people, backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Touchdown! Schindler won't be touched! 
touched and he's in for six. Coming soon to NET1. Five twenty-six. Bancroft Rosalie with the halftime lead over Elgin Pope John as we get ready for the second half of the D1 final here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Let's go down to Dan Hedman who's with Coach P.J. Book. Thanks guys. Paige Dinschlage uh, taken off earlier in the game. She got back in. What's her status for the second half? Uh, she won't be able to play. I think we, we tore, she tore ACL and tried to come back. We thought it was a partial tear right away. Uh, the girls have been a heart and soul of our team all year. And uh, but the bottom line from the start when we made this team it was never about one player it's about every player and uh, what they what they've made over a year of hard work and the other girls know that and just told them it's a, an opportunity for them to, to back her how she's backed them all year. All right, unfortunate news. Thank you coach. Good luck in the second half. We'll be right back. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job with Nebraska Public Power District takes me to new heights, offers me challenging experiences. Like me, the utility cares about Nebraska. I go home at night knowing that what I do makes a difference. To put it simply, I am where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us. Together with your local public power utility. Rising from acres of Midwestern farm fields, a revolution is coming. A new era of energy independence from foreign oil. It's called soy biodiesel. Made with soybean oil, this fuel is a sustainable, renewable resource. America, it's time for an oil change. Soy biodiesel, grown in the Midwest. Funding is provided in part by the Dr. Thomas and Dorothy Hallstrom Fund, created to support broadcasting of the Nebraska State High School Basketball Tournament. Well, Pope John will start with the basketball, but they'll also start the second half with the news that Paige Dinschlage will not be back. In her one chance to be in the state championship game, she got maybe two minutes of playing time, but unfortunately injured her knee, and what a tough, tough break. We'll see if her teammates can pick her up. This would be a huge pick-me-up, get a three right off the bat. Not quite, but an offensive rebound. Here we go again through the lane. And no, and saving at the baseline. Morgan Knipple maybe make taking a chance there. Ball looked like it was destined for out of bounds, and she decided to go for it instead of letting it go there. Yeah, you know, Bancroft Rosalie comes out in this second half. Well, obviously we're going to see attacking. I don't know if we're going to see so much up and down with Bancroft Rosalie. Well, they, they didn't have they a whole lot of it in the first half, so and they were able to be very effective in the half-court set. So. Maybe that's what the Panthers will go with. Regardless, Trudy Samuels in it. She's pretty good over her 20 years, figured a few things out. I think she has. She's got one state championship to her credit, 2001. As Shelby Bodette makes the first of two free throws. What a very nice stroke. Look at that. Very smooth. 
Well, that's why they say that she's arguably the best player in the class. Very natural basketball player. 37-26, Bancroft Rosalie opening seconds here of the second half through the lane and taken away by Gokin, and then she's gonna get the feed down the floor and takes it all the way in herself, but not enough on the shot. However, teammates there to pick her up as Kayleen Anderson. Anderson was trailing the play, just crashed right into the board, was able to get the get the rebound and put it back up and in for two. Well, good start here for Bancroft Rosalie. First four points of this half, and they've extended that lead out to 13. Now, Pope John was in a similar circumstance in the first quarter, but managed to fight back. They're not going to be able to fight back if they continue to turn the ball over. Turnovers have been crucial, but there's one there to the benefit of the Crusaders. Now, watch Gokin on these defensive sets. She's at the top of the Bancroft Rosalie zone. Even if something gets past her and it goes down to the lower level, she's still able to get those long arms in there and smack the ball away. She's done it twice already here in the third quarter. It was a nice entry pass, but again, the Panther defense was right on top of it. And here comes Gokin again into the front court. Lead is 13 here for Bancroft Rosalie. Pope John playing man to man. Bancroft Rosalie using a lot of that half court set. Oh, nice backdoor play for two. Megan Stansberry. Kudos go to Knipple, who set the uh, screen there to get Knipple wide open down low. And the lead is the biggest it has been all day, and P.J. Book wants a timeout. It has been a slow, slow start, a 6-0 run to begin the second half. And Bancroft Rosalie is now up 41-26. to 26. Hi, I'm Matt Davison, and I drive Nebraska's highways almost every day. Please use caution when driving in winter weather and watch for highway workers as they clear the roads. Slow down when you meet a snow plow, and don't brake suddenly if you're traveling in front of one. They can't stop as quickly as a car or pickup. If you're gonna head out in winter weather, check out the Nebraska Travel Information website at 511nebraska.org, or just dial them at 511. Don't take any chances this year. If there's ice and snow, take it slow. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. The Nebraska Soybean Board, encouraging the use of renewable biodiesel fuels for a healthier environment. For information, nebraskasoybeans.org. And by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Nebraska. The blues are good for you. Bancroft Rosalie leading by 15. Midway through the third period of the D1 Girls State Basketball Championship game here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Well, we've already seen one team rally from as much as 15 points down today. Pope John's going to have to try to be the second as they look down low for the entry pass. Kuhlman comes away with it but draws four of five Panther defenders. And there is no way you're going to be able to get out of that tangled web. And Bancroft Rosalie comes away with yet another turnover. It's really been the Panthers' defense getting it done here in the third quarter, sparking this nice little run they have brewing. Goken faked the three, now drives in, gets the high kick off the glass, an offensive rebound, a put back and count the basket. Kayleen Anderson to the line for the three-point play. A lot of strength for Anderson, because most often when you get that rebound and you go down for that hard dribble, it gets smacked away, but she was able to, you know, Crack up the muscles and take it up strong and finish. Between defenders, See one the, those arms were down there reaching for it, but she's able to fight through. Chance to convert for three here. It's good. 12 points for Kayleen Anderson. She averages nine per game. Three players already into double figures for Bancroft, Rosalie. Gokin and Anderson each with a dozen and Bodette with 10. Pope John looking to score their first field goal or four first points for that matter here in the second half. More importantly, they're looking just to get a shot off. They've had a problem with that. And that shot was partially deflected or at least was altered because of the physical play down, lo down low. Pope John though will keep possession here. Here's the high lob. Sire no, but there's the offensive rebound. You know, Jackie Sire had a had an influence in Pope John staying in this game in the first and second quarters and got pretty quiet there in the latter stages of the period. There she comes up with the 
defensive rebound, and now here comes Pope John wanting to run. Nice break down the floor. And we've seen these two work together, Megan Bike and Casey Stoltz. Well done. Easy bounce pass. A lot of times if that's a chess pass, it's get, it gets tipped out of bounds. Using the floor. And the lead is down to 14. So a quick 4-0 run here for Pope John. See if they can continue to build on that as we're halfway through the period. Goken, wow! Hit that, the Raptors. That one just about hit the Raptors. Holy. That had some serious hang time on it. Hey, when you do that, it makes the swish even prettier, right? Yes, it does. Paige Goken with 15 points, and there's a traveling call. Boy, those turnovers really mounting now. I believe that's the 17th turnover. If they had already posted, yep, there it is. 17th turnover already for Elgin Pope John. A good portion of those coming in the second half. It's just Bancroft Rosalie. We heard Trudy Samuelson say at halftime, what are we going to do in the second half? Crank up the defense and followed through on it. So just like that, a 4 nothing run has been nullified, first by that three and then by the turnover. And the Panthers will set up in the half court. Goken. That might have been an opportunity for Goken to just take it up and score it herself. Instead, she was trying to be a good teammate and let Morgan Knipple do the finishing. Well, they do have three players who average in double figures. They already they reached that point already today. Stansberry for three. Make it four players in double figures. Stansberry now with 11, and that's the one to uh, really get the crowd into it. 20-point contest, 50 to 30. And she had a defender flashing in front of her face as she let go of the shot. And then the turnover. And now Bancroft Rosalie in complete control of this one. Up by 20. They have outscored Pope John 15 to 4 here in the period. And for a rare chance, a rare time here in the second half, a mistake. Bancroft Stansbury Rosalie, uh, a well-oiled machine right now. No doubt about it. And as we said, coming in, this is a team that had scored 90 a couple of times into the 80s a couple of times. It's an awesome offensive and defensive team here in Class D1. Tie-up called, possession to Bancroft Rosalie. It seems to me too, John, that the Panthers have several interchangeable parts. You know, you look up and down the ladies that are on the floor, Feekin, Stansberry, Bodette, Gokin, they all seem to be able to play similar roles, so it doesn't matter who's on the court, who's on the bench. And this is a, t a team that's without a senior leader in Katie Stansberry, who's averaged 11 points through the season but was injured. Bodette thought about the three instead, starts to drive wide open. That's a long two. And again, offensive rebound, another chance. The smart team right there. Just to back it out, don't force it. Let's try to get a good shot off here. Bodette flashing to the line. And another offensive rebound. Boy, they've really been crashing the boards here in the second half. This is a very long possession for Bancroft Rosalie. We'll look for the entry pass to Anderson. And that time pass was just a little off the mark. Pope John will get it back the other way. Under two minutes left here in the period. And that has been the story of the third quarter. That was more of an unforced error than anything else. Mm -hmm. Just the Butterfingers slipped right through. Megan Stansberry will check back in. As you take a look at Amanda Munderlow, who comes off. A bit of pressure this time by Pope John, unfortunately get anything off of that defensively and so the Panthers again will set up in the half court you got to believe this may be the pattern for the rest of the game Bancroft Rosalie is just going to milk every possession absolutely Burn savor clock. the moment right you got a 20 point lead there's no reason to get crazy John it's kind of crazy to see this D1 championship game without a team from Humphrey in it yeah it is namely St. Francis three straight championships yeah. and it bounced in the first round I don't know how many people saw that coming. It was kind of an up and down season for the Flyers. Shelby Bodette for three. 
a quiet 14 points this afternoon, or 13 points, I beg your pardon, for Shelby Bodette, but they count all the same, and it's now a 23-point lead. Balanced scoring. Nice entry pass. You know, Casey Stoltz and Megan Vike, they've had each other's, they've been on the same wavelength here. They've played uh, assist score on about three or four different occasions here this afternoon. They connected there, 53 to 32. Yeah, Humphrey St. Francis bounced out of here in the first round. We also had Crofton, who was going for four in a row, knocked out before championship Saturday. Yeah, that looked like a clean block there for a moment as Casey Stoltz came in, swatted the ball away, but she will be called with the foul. And that's going to send Kayleen Anderson to the line. Anderson, one of those now four players into double figures for the Panthers. We'll be able to add to it, though, at least not on that free throw. Not only... John, go ahead, Kevin. Pope John has had a great run here at the state tournament. I know right now that's not exactly the score they want to be looking at down by 21, but this is a team that had never won a ball game at state, and here they are playing for the state championship in just their second appearance in Lincoln. Bancroft, Rosalie, Potentially, unless we have a dramatic change here, as we'll get a foul on Danielle Kuhlman. Unless we have a dramatic change here, Bancroft Rosalie is about to add its name to a very lengthy list, at least in my opinion, of teams who have won both girls, volleyball, and basketball titles in the same academic season. So many programs have done that through the course of history, and not just in the smaller classes, large and small where you get the double up and you don't you don't see that as much in the boys sports granted Omaha Central has kind of bucked right. that trend sweeping track football and basketball and we'll see them next week possibly on Saturday but a lot of programs they use that volleyball to help their basketball and their basketball to help their volleyball and it certainly has helped here for Bancroft Rosalie who is eight minutes away from a girls state basketball championship here on NETN 1011. The NSAA State High School Basketball Championships are underwritten in part by Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Education Quest Foundation, improving access to college through scholarships, grants, and college planning services. And by U.S. Bank, measuring success through performance, pride, products, and people, backed by a five-star service guarantee. U.S. Bank, member FDIC. Join NET's Sports Partners Club and be a part of a team that delivers Nebraska sports coverage to your home. As a club member, you can receive a member certificate, a club duffel bag, a signed Matt Davison poster, and more. Don't be a spectator, be a team member. Join NET's Sports Partners Club today. Fifty-four thirty-two, the score of the D1 Girls State Basketball Championship game here in the year 2008. Bancroft Rosalie in control as we head into the fourth quarter. A 19 to six third quarter has turned what was a pretty competitive game through the first half. Granted, it was a nine-point lead, but Pope John was playing well enough to stay in it. Errant pass and thrown right into the hands of Shelby Bodette. She'll take it down. Yeah, good defense coming back the other way as Taylor Dinschlagi knocks it out of bounds and prevents the easy layup. Jackie Sire checking back in for Pope John. Just two losses on the season. Ewing, which we will see later today, and Chambers, who we could have seen both teams qualifying in Class D2, so it's not like Pope John lost to bad teams. They nope. A lot of good, good wins. Really good ones. Zero bad losses. John, I was just doing some math over here. It takes me a while to do that. But uh, <laughs> 19 points you mentioned in the third quarter. Look at the point distribution for Bancroft Rosalie in this game. 17 in the first quarter, 18 in the second, 19 in the third. There's Tracy Eyshine again for another three. She's got eight. Making it a 22-point game and a turnover. So Pope John's going to come around and 
get it right back here in the opening minute of this fourth quarter. Well, they won't go down without a fight, you know. Well, you would expect that, especially from P.J. Book and another unforced error. I shot just stood on the sideline, dribbling with the basketball and stood on the sideline. That's a turnover. But you would expect this Pope John program. We've documented it throughout the broadcast how P.J. Book has come over from come over. He's been the football coach, the basketball coach, but he's had winning seasons every year and. This year, the message of athleticism and hard physical play have paid off, and they've gotten Pope John as far as they have ever been here in the state tournament. Certainly in the right direction. Kayleen Anderson for two. Boy, the future looks pretty bright for this young sophomore. Anderson with 15 points here this afternoon. She'll be back for Bancroft Rosalie. Some Does not play though, like a sophomore. Outlet down the floor. Here's Gokin for two. It's kind of a capsule of the game right there, especially the second half where they, you know, they erupted in that third quarter, and it all started with the defense getting a quick turnover, and they had the court to themselves. A lot of fast break points coming in the way of Bancroft Rosalie. Short on the three from Eichheit, and it's back the other way for Bancroft Rosalie. 61 to 35 here in the fourth quarter. Class B game is coming up next. We've had second straight year where we've altered our schedule a bit in terms of the order of which when the finals were played for many years we would be in the D2 game right now and the Class A game would be next. But this year Class A moves to prime time for the first time. I think it's been close to 20 years. I'm not 100% sure but Class A will be in prime time tonight. So the B game which usually was our last game of the night. We'll see South Sioux and Alliance next. 535 left to play here in the ball game. Bancroft Rosalie cruising towards a state championship. Programming provided by Nebraska Public Power District. My job as an engineer for the Nebraska Public Power District is rewarding. My education and technical skills are used every day to help generate electricity for Nebraska. And I feel good because I believe that what I do maintains the state's quality of life. NPPD is where I want to be. Nebraska Public Power District, always there when you need us, together with your local public power utility. Rising from acres of Midwestern farm fields, a revolution is coming. A new era of energy independence from foreign oil. It's called soy biodiesel. Made with soybean oil, this fuel is a sustainable renewable resource. America, it's time for an oil change. Soy biodiesel, grown in the Midwest. 5.53 to go, or 5.35 rather, to go in um, quarter number four, of the D1 State Championship game. All the way, Bancroft Rosalie has been the leader in this one, and they have since pulled away. And we're gonna get a timeout as Paige Gokin was trapped on the sideline, and. Trudy Samuelson didn't like what she was seeing from her team on the start of that possession, so she takes the timeout. That's their first. They've got plenty left if they need him, but he thinks they won't. Probably, <laughs> yeah, we'll probably see some reserves come in here for Bancroft Rosalie, get some of the youngsters a little court time on the Devaney Center. Hardwood, a refresher on some stats, John. Uh, Bancroft Rosalie, you don't want to play horse against that team. They're 9 of 10 from beyond the arc. That's a pretty good clip. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, you know, Pope John has been dealing with some injuries this year, but so too has Bancroft Rosalie. Let's go down to Dan courtside. Dan Hedman, what do you got? Yeah, guys, when they were shooting free throws, I noticed on a couple of the sneakers there, the Bancroft Rosalie players paying tribute to one of their seniors. It's Katie Stansberry. She tore ACL about a month ago. She's not able to play in this tournament, but the senior could still win a state title, and he, her teammates aren't forgetting about her, that's for sure. They are just four minutes and 55 seconds away from what looks like a perfect season. Guys? The number 20 on each of the sneakers for Bancroft Rosalie. As they take their time on this possession. Tie up is called. That one will belong to Pope John. Yeah, it's always hard. And of course, we have documented a, a lot this afternoon. Paige Dinschlagi being out of this game for Pope John because she injured her knee in this game. And it's always hard to see someone get this far 
or take you well through a season as Stansberry did as we get a three from Molly Feekin and not get the chance to play here. And you know, Stansberry's been working her whole career to get to this moment. And unfortunately, she won't get that opportunity to play. But pretty nice consolation prize when that gold medal will be dangling around it, her neck yeah, here it has in another 423. It has to be so hard to give you know, all the blood, sweat, and tears of a regular season. And then every, the one thing you're working for that entire time, a state championship, you're not able to participate down the stretch. It's got to be such a difficult situation. So a cool thing that her teammates are doing for her. Now, they were hoping that Katie might be able to play uh, in this state tournament. The clock is still running, by the way. The uh, For some reason, the timekeeper at... Uh, wouldn't stop the clock. The clock is still, still running going. down. They have to adjust it right now and uh, figure out where they're supposed to be. It's possible that they may have not been running the clock at all. I was not paying attention, to be honest with you, so they're probably trying to get it set to the right time. Well, there was a look at Katie Stansberry, and Stansberry with 11 points a game, a senior. We wish her the best of luck. Is She'll move on. Yeah, wherever the road may take her. So as they get the clock figured out, right now here in the Devaney Center, Bancroft Rosalie 64, Pope John 35. Bancroft Rosalie has been the number one team in the state from the get-go, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news for the rest of Class D1, but you have uh, Shelby Bodette, the All-Stater, who is a junior, Paige Gokin, who had a big first half, is a junior. Kayleen Anderson, who has had a good game today, she scored 15 points. She's a sophomore, so a pretty good core coming back next season for the Panthers and head coach Trudy Samuelson. It would not be beyond the realm of possibility that they are back here again. Looks like they are still going to work on the clock, so we're going to take this quick break. 3.37 left to play. We believe 337 left to play. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Matt Davison, and I drive Nebraska's highways almost every day. Please use caution when driving in winter weather and watch for highway workers as they clear the roads. Slow down when you meet a snow plow and don't brake suddenly if you're traveling in front of one. They can't stop as quickly as a car or pickup. If you're going to head out in winter weather, check out the Nebraska Travel Information website at 511nebraska.org or just dial them at 511. Don't take any chances this year. If there's ice and snow, take it slow. Programming on NET television is made possible in part by U.S. Bank, fulfilling their commitment to serve customers wherever they are on their terms, providing a full range of banking services at 57 branch offices and more than 100 ATMs located conveniently across Nebraska. Wherever you go, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, you'll find us. It could be a long rest of the day here at the Devaney Center. Why? How long? We don't know. The clock is inoperable. It reads 337, but there's under 410 to go. Yeah, they have just told us during the break that they're going to actually keep the time at the table. So that would have been we'll really see. tough in our first championship game when there was nine seconds left. Yeah, that would be <laughs> tough. I mean, and in that situation, what do you do? Scream out the clock? Uh, it's you would have to. They're still looking it over right now. Oh, now the clock's set at 4.10. They might have to run it down to, I guess it would be about seven, eight seconds. Yeah, they're still talking about, you saw Butch Hug in the picture there. Butch is the uh, events manager here at the uh, Devaney Center and, and all of Nebraska athletics. He's had a busy weekend. You know, we were talking about this in the media room yesterday. Not only do we have the Girls State Tournament going on this weekend, but right next door here at the Devaney Center, the Big 12 Indoor Track and Field Championships. And I believe that it is the first time, it's the first time in my memory 
that we've had both those events here. It was used to be almost tradition that Nebraska would host the indoor track and field championships for the big, then it was the big eight. Correct. But uh, now they rotated around a little bit more with the added uh, Texas schools. But this, is, I believe, is the first time in at least 15 years that we've had both events going on simultaneously. So it's been a very busy weekend for a lot of the staff that works here traditionally at the Advantage Center and also parking folks and extra people brought in to control the crowds for both those events. That might be an ongoing issue because Nebraska track and field coach Gary Pepin said earlier this week he wants the Devaney Center to be the permanent site of the Big 12 indoors and the timing of that just really conflicts with the boys and girls state basketball championships not to mention that uh, the event staff for the Devaney Center they're also often used at Haymarket Park and other Nebraska events the baseball home opener is this weekend <laughs> and uh, not to mention the Nebraska women's basketball team playing at home tomorrow yeah it, it, the no rest for the weary in this case. That's interesting that they want to try to make it permanent. I, I got to believe the Texas schools aren't going to be happy about that. Uh, Coach Pepin says that the Devaney Center track most, res most resembles where the NCAA championships are held, which is Arkansas. So that's his big push. Plus, the attendance is pretty solid for the Big 12 indoors here. They tried it at Iowa State last year, and that numbers were pretty low. I'm guessing the Big 12 folks didn't like that uh, drop off in revenue. So we, it may be something down the road for those of you who plan to attend state tournaments in the future, just to keep that in mind. It may be more of an occurrence that both events are going on at the same time. So far, at least to my knowledge, you know, we, it hasn't been terrible uh, as far as parking. They've done a good job of organizing everything and making sure traffic is run smoothly. So, so far, I would have to say so far, so good with all the events running on simultaneously. Mass substitutions coming in now. Shelby Bodette, Paige Gokin coming off the floor now together as a tandem for Bancroft Rosalie with the 29 point lead and under three minutes to play. By the way, the clock is back working again here in the Devaney Center Arena. A lot of hugs and smiles on the Bancroft Rosalie bench as. Look at the, the reserves running the break. Yeah, everybody getting into the fun here for Bancroft Rosalie. And we'll get the foul on the miss. And that one's going to be called on Jessica Wegner, a 5'8 senior. You take a look at Jessica making her first appearance in this game. She did play She's a little bit She's trying to contain tomorrow. that smile, too, yes, running down is. the floor, if you didn't notice. Yes, she is. We're going to have a complete line change, if you will, for Pope John. All reserves coming in now. And a big round of applause for both teams and their starters as they have come off together in tandem. Not the way that Pope John wanted to end the season. But you knew it was uphill climb already coming in, facing this Bancroft Rosalie team, which was considered such a favorite heading into the tournament. But then you'll lose your leading score early in the game in Paige Dinschlage, and it's been tough ever since. Can't hang your head for Pope John, though. What a great season, great run here at the state tournament to even get to this point in time. And keep in mind, they went blow for blow with Bancroft Rosalie in the first half. Midway through the second quarter, it was a four-point contest. So. Great effort by Pope John, and the uh, future certainly looks bright for the Crusaders. Some of the players on the floor that we haven't had a chance to mention yet. Michaela Bruni, number 33 for Pope John. You've got Kayla Brungart in the game. Kelly Schmidt. Jesse Pelster is out there, and so too is Jenna Beckman. All reserves now for Pope John. We'll get a 30-second timeout here, and reserves also dominating the floor now for Bancroft. Rosalie, two minutes left to play. And the Panthers getting ready to celebrate a state championship and double up in volleyball and basketball. Keep in mind these were these reserves while they don't get the the press and all the notoriety of the starters they play such a big role in Bancroft Rosalie and Pope John's success. It's not easy coming to practice every single day and mocking that opponent defense. You look at some of the opponents that Bancroft Rosalie plays. You know, <laughs> that's a tough task to try to model some of these teams. You look up and down they West Point Central Catholic. How do you want that assignment? They beat him twice. Try, try to model a dynasty in Class C1. C2, beg your pardon. Exactly. I mean, a program that has been so good for basically the better part of the last decade. And they're practically neighbors. Uh, for those of you not familiar, Bancroft and Rosalie, both near West Point up there in northeast Nebraska. So there's a lot of pressure. And then, you know, you go up a few miles down the road, you got the uh, powerhouse at South Sioux City, there's a lot of good girls basketball played in Northeast Nebraska. And I think a lot of that feeds off of each other just as 
We talk a lot in Class A with the Omaha schools and the Lincoln schools who feed off each other and their success. The same thing happens in regions of the state as well. On the northeast corner of the state of Nebraska, the basketball is awfully good. Mentioned some of the players on the floor for the Panthers. Taylor Ostrand is out there. So too is Brittany Buck, Chelsea Saul. We mentioned Jessica Wegner, who had a foul earlier on. And Aaron Butler. Great sportsmanship there by Wegner. I want to point that out. You know, she went in there and knocked the ball away. Uh, the Crusaders, that was number 22, Kelly Schmidt going down. But Wegner was right there to reach out the hand and help Schmidt up. Excellent to see that. Final minute to play here in the fourth period of the Class D1 championship. Stay tuned, medal presentations. We'll talk to the coaches coming up. There's two. Jessica Wagner, so she won't show up in the score sheet just as committing a foul. She'll get in there for points as well. Mancroft Rosalie just staying in that zone. That's something that Trudy Samuelson just preaches year in and year out. And this year it worked to a T. That D led to a lot of points in the third quarter. But there's a pivotal moment. Nice steal by Ostrand. She'll take it in herself. Waiting, waiting. Finds a teammate. Won't we'll get the basket this time. Pope John just nine points in the second half. It was a nine point game, 35 26 at the break. And Pope John has struggled here through this second half. They just turned it on. And there was some point in time. Midway through the fourth quarter where they just got up, got hot at the right time. Yeah, a lot of Never turnovers. Back. A lot of turnovers. Mm -hmm. It hurt him in the first half. It really hurt him in the second half. And some of them were also unforced errors. Final seconds ticking away here at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. Still letting them play out. Shot up almost good. They'll get one more try. And that will do it. They'll count the basket. And that's it. Bancroft Rosalie, 68, Pope John, 35. They run the table, John. It was, a very, it was a very impressive season for Bancroft Rosalie, finishing 27 and 0. Congratulations to the Panthers, and we'll meet both teams with the medal presentations when we come back. Carrier. Coming in April to NET1. at the Devaney Center, Bancroft Rosalie with the 23-point victory. I should say 33-point victory. State champions for the first time since 2001. Let's now meet the two teams and get our Sportsmanship Award presentation as we head back now to Steve Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are pleased to present the Sportsmanship Award for Class D1. We want to thank all schools, students, fans, players, and coaches for their ongoing efforts to improve sportsmanship at the state tournament and throughout the year. We also thank Awards Unlimited and the Nebraska Inde Independent College Foundation for sponsoring these awards. Making the presentation and representing the Nebraska Athletic Directors Association is Mike Lanham of Southern Valley High School. Presenting the award and representing the Nebraska Independent College Foundation is Dr. Wayne Baker from York College. This year's Class D1 Sportsmanship Award is presented to Bancroft Rosalie High School. Receiving the award are the Bancroft Rosalie cheerleaders. Congratulations, Bancroft Rosalie. School Activities Association is pleased to present medals and trophies to both of these outstanding teams. The awards will be presented by NSAA Board of Control member Jay Beller of Battle Creek and Dr. Bob Resnicek of Omaha West Side. They will be assisted by U.S. Bank Representative Holly Myers. 
first, here are the awards for the 2008 Class D1 runner-up from Pope John High School. Well, head coach P.J. Book and your assistant step toward the middle of the court to present the silver medals to each member of your team. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number one, Megan Vike. Number four, Jesse Pilster. Number 12, Taylor Dinslogge. Number 22, Kelly Schmidt. Number 33, Michaela Bruni. Number 40, Jenna Beckman. Number 50, Kara Brungard. Number three, Cassie Stoltz. Number 15, Tracy Eishai. Number 23, Danielle Kuhlman. Number 25, Paige Dinslogge. Number double zero, Jackie Sire. All of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, Pope John High School, 2008 Class D1 State Runner-Up. to the champions from Bancroft Rosalie High School. First, head coach Trudy Samuelson, we have a special coaches award for you. Now coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. Players, as your name is called, please come forward to receive your medal. Number 10, Molly Feekin. Number 13, Aaron Butler. Number 14, Brittany Buck. Number 15, Taylor Ostrand. Number 21, Amanda Munderlow. Number 33, Chelsea Saul. Number 45, Jessica Wegner. Number 12, Megan Stansberry. Number 23, Shelby Bodette. Number 24, Paige Gokin. Number 30, Morgan Knippel. Number 32, Kayleen Anderson. You're welcome to receive the state championship trophy. Congratulations to the Panthers of Bancroft Rosalie High School, the 2008 Class D1 State Basketball Champions. And a nice moment as well as a gold medal was also saved behind for their injured comrade as Bancroft Rosalie 
claims the victory here in the Class D1 championship game. Of course, we're talking about Katie Stansberry, who also wasn't introduced, but it was also given a medal as being a big part of this team. The senior who was injured midway through the season did not get a chance to play here in the state tournament. But Bancroft Rosalie with the 68 to 35 victory. They dominated the second half, outscoring Pope John 33 to 9. And a very pivotal third quarter. Let's go down to Dan Hedman. He's got the Pope John head coach. All right, I'm here with Coach Book. Coach, obviously uh, a key injury in this game uh, affected the outcome a little bit, but in the end, you know, Ghost played well all season long. Yeah, uh, uh, have, losing the, losing somebody like her, she's a four-year starter. She's a uh, team leader, team captain, so losing her is going to affect us. It would affect any team, but but we have a group of girls that's uh, worked hard together all year, and and it was never about one girl, and Paige would probably be the first one to say that it was never just about one girl on our team. We win together and we lose together. Let's take two steps this way so they can take some pictures here, but also just want to talk about this team had never won a, a game in the state tournament before they get to the finals this year. What's the future going to be like? Well. You know, Paige and Danielle graduate, and uh, we have two other seniors that were that uh, were role players for us that worked really hard that graduate. But other than that, we have six of the eight girls that rotate for us to be back next year. And it was just a group of girls that, at the end of last season, after a disappointing start or a disappointing finish to last year, said they wanted to be the best team ever in school history, and and they did that. And whether they win state or lose state, if we'd never even won a game down here before and they make it to a state championship, they didn't just eke by being the best team. They, they made a statement, and it'll last forever in the community. All right, thanks, Coach. We'll let you go. Nice season. We're going to go to break, but we'll be right back. Live coverage of the 2008 State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by Where Futures Begin, Community Colleges, Central, Metro, Mid Plains, Northeast, Southeast, or Western Nebraska Community Colleges. State Farm Insurance is proud to sponsor Nebraska high school sports. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Nebraska Federation of Catholic School Parents, supporting schools that enrich Nebraska communities and promoting educational choice through identity, unity, collaboration, and empowerment. One Oak Energy Marketing, natural gas from One Oak, always a warm welcome. Welcome to the Grand Illusion. Here's a symphonic concert that features the talents of Dennis DeYoung, a singer, songwriter, and founding member of the rock group Styx. Hear Styx classics like Come Sail Away and Lady, plus find out how to get tickets to DeYoung's concert with the Omaha Symphony in May. Dennis DeYoung, the music of Styx with the Omaha Symphony Orchestra. Thursday at 7 Central Time on NET1. Back at the Devaney Center as Bancroft Rosalie celebrates a state championship in girls basketball, second one since 2001. 68 to 35 winners over Pope John. The final numbers individually Bancroft Rosalie led by Paige Gokin with 17 points, but four players in double figures, including Shelby Bodette with 16 and Kayleen Anderson with 15. Pope John did not get anyone into double figures, but Tracy Ishot and Megan Vike each score eight for the state runners up. We'll meet the champions from Bancroft Rosalie right after this.
Explore the imperial cities of Prague, Vienna, and Budapest with NET. Between September 22nd and October 2nd, we'll take in the sights, sounds, and tastes of these native lands for so many classical musicians and artists. To find out more, call 800-634-6788 or visit our website, netnebraska.org slash imperial cities. A good cowboy can't go to bed at night if his cows are hungry. You spend all of your life taking care of animals. These are the stories that made Nebraska the beef state. Coming this June on NET1 and NETHD. Bancroft Rosalie wins their second ever state championship in the winner's circle with Trudy Samuelson. Trudy, this one though, you run the table perfect 27 and zero. What's the season been like? Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's been phenomenal. These are a group of kids that uh, I'm gonna miss terribly. And I'm gonna get really emotional here. Uh, they're wonderful kids and uh, they deserve it. They've earned it. And uh, I can't think of a better group of kids to to get, win a state championship. I think the emotions say a lot, uh, how much you care for these girls. Let's break down today's game. Uh, something just sparked there in the second quarter. It was a four point contest and you guys went on a big run and you never looked back. Yeah, we did. Um, the kids got real patient on offense and we ended up getting some really easy layups and some easy looks there. And as soon as that happened, there was just kind of a, a spring to our step and, and uh, Defense kind of got going a little bit more, and you're right. We just didn't look back. We continued to, to play hard. From beyond the arc, you uh, made 10 of 11 threes, our, our favorite numbers, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, shooting above 90% from three. Have you seen that out of this team this year? You know, we, we shoot well. We really do. Um, these kids have spent a lot of time uh, shooting, and we've got a gentleman out of Fremont that comes and does shooting with us, and the kids have bought into it, and they've done a great job of working at it. So um, today it paid off. Uh, phenomenal shooting tonight or today. And uh, no, we have never shot that well, but we usually shoot really pretty well. Trudy, thank you so much. Congratulations to school's second state championship. We'll be back with the players right after this. Coming to your PBS station, relive it all over again. My music, the 60s. Coming soon to NET1. If it's on the net, it's open to anyone. There are no safeguards. The story is such a great story, and I think we're still in love with that story. You get fired off that front end. Just scream the whole way down. Where would you be? She sings from the heart with a voice that soars. Country superstar Martina McBride rocks great performances with her greatest hits, both old and new. This one's for Embrace Martina McBride live in concert on Great Performances. Thursday night at 9 Central Time on NET1. We have a uh, post-game injury in the winner's circle. Morgan Knuppel, her face hurts from smiling so much. <laughs> the D1 state champions from Bancroft, Rosalie, how neat is this? This is awesome. It's really a great feeling. Like, we've all worked really hard this year, and it's just great to go out like this with a win and state champion and be undefeated. So, just a great feeling. Talk about that journey, 27-0, and zero, pretty remarkable. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We worked really hard throughout the year, and we wanted, this was a main goal, just to go undefeated. and. We just kept working hard. So. Morgan, thank you very much. Thank we'll let you, you hand off the championship trophy. Thank and you. we'll next bring in 
Uh, Megan Stansbury, 11 points, one of four players in double figures today. Uh, I asked Coach about the second quarter. What happened there when you guys went on that big run? Um, she just told us to, uh, we needed to pick it up and we needed to just uh, <clears throat> keep going and we uh, couldn't look back. So Was it a mean, we got to pick it up type deal or is it more of a confident, we know we can play better? Uh, more of a confident. Okay, thank you very much, Megan. We appreciate it. Kaylee and Anderson coming up next, 15 points, three rebounds. Now with the championship trophy. Kayleen, you're one of the youngsters on this team. Uh, the future still looks pretty good for Bancroft Rosalie, too. Just talk about your role and the way that you guys have a lot of uh, returning players for next year. Yeah, um, I just I have to work hard on the inside, and I just work hard to rebound for the team. Perfect. Thank you, Kayleen, very much. Uh, next up, Shelby Bodet, one of the All-Staters, perhaps the best player in all of D1. That's to be argued on another day. 16.6 rebounds. Most importantly, you're a state champion. You'll take that most importantly, correct? Right. I mean, I'd rather have a state championship than 30 points, or it's much better to do it with the team. Shelby, talk about these threes. 10 of 11 from beyond the arc. What happened there? I mean, we, we're a good shooting team, and we work on that. And... I don't know, we were just really hot tonight and that was that helped us a lot. Shelby, thank you very much. Congratulations. And last but not least, Paige Gokin, 17 points, four rebounds. Uh, we're gonna talk about the shoes and you guys have Katie's name on there. Yeah. Just kind of give us some insight on what the emotions are behind that whole story and to be able to win a championship for her. Um, we just couldn't let her down. I mean, we wanted to do all of this for her and and I'm sure she's really happy for it and just, I don't know, it's really emotional, I guess. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Lastly, 27-0. Did you guys see that coming from day one, first day of practice? Did you know that this was possible? Um, no, not really, but I was really confident in that we could come down here and, and win. I mean, it was great. Paige, congratulations, and congratulations to the entire Bancroft Rosalie, your D1 state champion. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations to all the players, the community, and everybody involved with Bancroft Rosalie's championship run. We'll be right back. Hello, I hope you're enjoying NET sports coverage of the high school state championships. I'm here with Adrian Fiala, and as NET sports announcer and host of Big Red Wrap Up, Adrian really needs no introduction, but many of you may not know that he's also the chair of the NET Sports Partners Club. Well, Jeff, it's an honor for me to be here today to serve as the chair of the NET Sports Partners Club. And really, I'm thrilled to be here uh, during the high school state championships and excited about the year to come. That's great. Well, as you know, Adrian, NET Sports broadcasts high school sports across the entire state of Nebraska. And viewers everywhere tell us they're always inspired by the depth and excitement of our coverage. And one of the primary reasons I agreed to serve as chair is because of my appreciation for NET's coverage of high school sports. You know, I had the privilege to play high school sports many years ago here in Nebraska in the 60s, and many things have changed since, uh, Jeff, mm -hmm. but the lessons and the values I learned from sports back then still serve me to this day. Well, that's right, and I also had the privilege of playing high school sports in the 70s, and although I never played in a championship game or here on NET, I'll always cherish that experience. We had some great times, Jeff, and I believe that both of us agree that we'd like to keep the high school players championship dreams alive right here on NET. Well absolutely Adrian and that's why NET has formed the Sports Partners Club. It's designed to raise funds and support the high school and college sports that we air here right on NET. And fans I'm inviting all of you all Nebraskans to join me in becoming charter members of the NET Sports Partners Club. We have several membership options open. For your gift of $60, we'll thank you with a charter member certificate personally signed by Adrian and your choice of an NET sports documentary on DVD. For $120, you'll get the certificate, the DVD, and this great NET sports sweatshirt in your choice of blue or red. And then for $240, we'll send you the certificate, the DVD, the sweatshirt, and the sports partner's duffel bag. Call us now. Our membership staff is waiting to hear from you at 800-676-5446. Fans, it's a great investment in sports. Do call us now. My pen is ready to go to sign those uh, certificates. Your membership will have many benefits down the road. You'll be personally invited to our preseason tailgate party and auction. That'll be on August 7th uh, this summer. You'll receive special mailings, and you may have a chance to join me right here in the studio for a live broadcast of Big Red Wrap-Up. Well, call us right now on... 
join the uh, Sports Partners Club at the $60 level. And we'll send you a charter member certificate signed by Adrian and the DVD of your choice. For $120, we'll add a warm NET sweatshirt in blue or red. And for $240, we'll include this special Sports Partners duffel bag. So f uh, fans, won't you please join me now? Join me in the NET Sports Partners Club. Your gift will help NET continue broadcasting great high school coverage for years to come. Let's get busy now and put Adrian to work signing charter member uh, certificates. So call us right now. April to NET1. Hello, I'm Rod Bates, General Manager of NET. Do you rely on an outdoor antenna or rabbit ears to receive your favorite television channels? You'll soon have to make some choices. You'll have three options. First, you can buy a digital television set. Second, you can subscribe to a pay TV service like cable or satellite. And the third option is you can buy a converter box that will let you keep using your current television set. Now the federal government started offering DTV converter coupons worth $40 each to help you afford the boxes you'll need. You can apply by calling 888-388-2009 or you can log on to the internet and go to DTV2009.gov. If you have any questions at all, you can call us here at NET for help. Our number is 1-800-634-6788. We just want to make sure you continue to receive our programs. Welcome to the Grand Illusion. Here is a symphonic concert that features the talents of Dennis DeYoung, a singer, songwriter, and founding member of the rock group Styx. Hear Styx classics like Come Sail Away and Lady. Plus, find out how to get tickets to DeYoung's concert with the Omaha Symphony in May. Dennis DeYoung, the music of Sticks with the Omaha Symphony Orchestra. Thursday at 7 Central Time on NET1. Final wrap on the D1 championship. Bancroft Rosalie with the victory over Pope John. Congratulations once again to Bancroft Rosalie with the victory this afternoon. They are the second of six champions to be crowned on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And now for the first time in well, maybe the first time ever in my recollection, Class B is coming up over the lunch hour. So sit back, get ready, and enjoy it. 47 game win streak for Alliance versus the perennial power from South Sioux City. Should be a great matchup, and we'll have it for you. Plus, more pregame coming up here on NET and 1011.